episodes of Rawhide, two new faces, one of Henry's latest editions, are among the prizes in this week's show. And here's your host, Ted Rogers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Oh! Oh, what a super welcome. Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have you with us again for the big one. The biggest game on television, 3 2 1. And our theme this week, once again for you, is country and western with some superb country artists that we know you're going to enjoy a bit later on in the programme. Because I love all the singing cowboys, do you? Mustn't forget the Indians, though. <laughs> no, because things have been a bit difficult for those Indians as of late. Now they don't bother to scalp you anymore, they just give you two minutes with an army barber. <laughs> but all the gunfights with all those wonderful heroes, they like Billy the Kid and Calamity Jane. One night, Billy the Kid laid out six men, and just the opposite happened to Calamity Jane. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> Thank you. You know, as always on 3 to 1, we start with our quiz where we have three couples who play. They can win, believe me or not, £1,000 each. They play for £10 for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever they win at the end of the first round is what they get for each correct answer in the second. At the end of the quiz, two high couples go right through with one couple going through to the big prizes and another C&W fan. That's clutter and waste, my little booby mate, Dusty Bin. Here he is. Come on. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, I know. Look at that. <laughs> yes. All right. Southern discomfort he's got here. Yes. He's an illicit whiskey still. His whiskey might be 70% proof, but you know only too well he's 100% spoof. Because he's our moonshine menace. If our couples win him, they moosey on home with one dustbin. That's all they get. A brand new dustbin. Nothing else. Without any further ado, we'll get on. And we meet the people without whom we couldn't do our show. Our first couple tonight who are going to play the 3 2 1 quiz. Here they are. Now then. They laugh. Linda, who have we got? Who's our first couple? We have Roger and Linda Innes from Hull. From Hull, just down the road, not too far away. Roger, and uh, let's see, you, you work for a mail order company, yes? That's correct. And so what do yes. you do? What do you do there, Roger? Uh, just deal with the ladies and people who run catalogues and purchase uh -huh. goods through a mail order company. Yeah, which is, it's, it's, it's been a pretty big business today, isn't it? I Very, mean, really, yeah. you know. Very do you find business. people get behind with the payments and things like that? Often. Absolutely, yes. They do, isn't it weird that? I must, I'm one of those as well. I had a letter from my mail order company. They told me my payments were outstanding. <laughs> I wrote back, I said, thanks a lot. I thought they were pretty good as well. I was happy. <laughs> and Linda, you actually met Roger in a pub where you were a barmaid, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Really? I mean, barmaids are always the centre of attraction. I mean, what did Roger say or do that was so different then from other guys? His magical looks. <laughs> is it? He gave you that look, did he? Yes. It's funny that, because I met my missus in the pub, you know, and I often go back and look at the table we met under. <laughs> Love it. It's very... I mean... You know, when I met, I always remember that they were serving my favourite drink, free beer. That's the way I love it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I like that. You yeah. like that as well. Let's hope you're going to have one after the show tonight. We've got on. I have your questions. Here we are. Linda has them. Three, two, or one. Which one do you want to choose? There you are. Any, mini, money. Number one, you want. Why not? Couple number one. Good luck to you. You know we like you to answer alternately. OK, yes. Linda, that's you first, of course. We give you one to start with. And if you don't know an answer, just say don't know or pass. And I'll go on to your partner with the next question. Believe me, that way you can build up your score. Unfortunately, I have to take the first answer or part of the answer you give me if you're wrong. So please be careful with guesses, all right? And of course, we let you have one to start. So good luck to you. This question here is about the types of clothing. We will give you the name and we want you to say what kind of clothing it is. Now, a gabardine is a kind of coat. So we'll start you with that one. Gabardine is a kind of... Coat. Right. Boater. Pass. Pumps. Pass. Tuxedo. Jacket. Plus fours. Pass. Galoshes. Shoes. Yashmak. Pass. Dungarees. Trousers. Peter Pan. Pass. And cummerbund. Belt. Uh, yeah, would, we will accept that. Sash for the waist or belt, we will accept that. Peter Pan would have got me, of course. That's a collar. I didn't know that one. A yashmak, of course, is a veil. You find that in the Middle East quite a lot. Plus fours of trousers, of course, and pumps. Shoes, indeed. But you haven't done too bad there. Six right gives you 60 pounds, which is a nice start. Off you go with Linda, and we'll see you in round two. Let's have our second couple. We're going to play our quiz tonight. Lovely. Here's lovely Caroline Monroe. 
Superb outfits to go Beautiful along, of course, with outfit. Country and Western. Really Who's our smart. second couple, Caroline? Jeff and Sue Story from Carbrook, Cheshire. Carbrook, Cheshire. Now, where's that near, Jeff? Where? Very near to Manchester, the, cultural, Manchester. the new cultural centre of the north. Eh, hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, and he said it beautifully as well, didn't he? I see. Ah, yes. You're a member of the teaching profession. Where's your school? Is it? Uh, in Mosley. Mosley. It's a local high school. <laughs> Sue, you're a housewife, but you were a computer control clerk. And what exactly did that entail? Uh, I worked for local government, and oh. it was just setting up all the jobs, rates, uh -huh. salaries. Ah, I, I love the way you two met, because Jeff had seen Sue around because he fancied her. He inquired about her, found out she enjoyed amateur dramatics, and that, that wasn't his scene at all, but he was so keen on it, he joined the group. It's lovely to have you with us. There we are, one of those two envelopes is for you. Which are you going to choose? You want number three? Good. Okay, same rules apply there. Of course, don't know an answer, just say pass or don't know. I'll go on to your partner with the next question. Good luck. The question is about, again, types of clothing. We will give you the name and we want you to say what kind of clothing it is. Now, a crinoline is a type of petticoat. We'll start you with that one. A crinoline is a... Petticoat. Right. A trilby. A hat. Reefer. Pass. Plimsolls. Shoes. Sloppy Joe. Pass. Britches. Trousers. Shirt waster. Shirt Pass. waster. Van Dyke. Pass. British Warm. Pass. And Tippet. Tippet. Hat? <laughs> no, not far away. A cape for the shoulders. I didn't know that one either. I believe it was one of those sort of furry capes that went around the shoulders. British Warm was a military coat. Uh, a Van Dyke, I'd have said beard. That was a collar. Did you know that? Yeah, Van Dyke is a collar. Uh, a shirt waster is a... Do you know that, ladies? A dress. Yes, a dress. I didn't know that. Shirt waster is a dirty one to that, but I won't do it. <laughs> and it's <laughs> Sloppy Joe. Can you remember that? Yeah, it's a sweater. That, they used to slop all the way over the top. They hang over the top. A reefer, of course, was a reefer jacket. So at the end of that, four gives you 40 pounds. Again, not a bad start. 40 pounds, off you go with Caroline. We'll see you in round two. Couple number three, who are gonna play the three, two, one quiz? There they are. Now then, who's the third couple, Linda, for us tonight? We have Steve and Leslie Fagan from Leeds. Leeds, down the road a piece, eh, Steve? Not far, not far. Wh which part are you from in Leeds? Crossgates. Crossgates, yeah, I know that. Area manager for a catering firm, huh? But, That's uh, right. Big restaurants and fish and chips as well, huh? Well, Sarah's self-service mm. restaurant. I see. And Leslie, you, you do some part-time work, of course, and what is that? What do you do? I teach business studies. I see. And mm. you, you're, very, you're very fond of supermarket competitions. Yes, we Had are. Had a lot of success, I hear. We are doing, yes. Yes? Yeah, uh, what, what have you won? quite successful. Uh, we've won a giant teddy bear, uh -huh. um, deep fat fryer. Oh, that's handy. A sledge. <laughs> a sledge. <laughs> camera. Well, both handy, eh? Money. Money. Better. A little bit. Yeah, teddy bear, that could keep your place in the queue. And you could use the trolley if you get a wonky wheel on the trolley, <laughs> couldn't you? Anyway, let's have the questions. There we are, the last envelope. Thanks a lot, Linda. That means they're the ones for you. Of course, you will get a free choice in the next round, all right? So again, good luck to you. Answer alternately and just be careful with guesses. We'll let you have one to start. Question again is about types of clothing. We will give you the name and we want you to say what kind of clothing it is. Now, a boa is a kind of scarf. We'll start you with that one. A boa is a... Scarf. Right. Wellingtons. Boots. Jodkers. Trousers. Blazer. Jacket. Mittens. Gloves. Cloche. Pass. Ulster. Pass. Dirndl. Skirt. Bermudas. Shorts. Moccasins. Plimsolls. Plimsolls? What will we do? I... Shoes, I've got. The adjudicator, Debbie Sutherland, says it's got to be shoes, I'm afraid. That's the answer we must have. We can't take that. Never mind, you've not done bad at all. Ulster coat. I didn't know Ulster no. was a coat. No. Cloche was a hat. Uh, and that's about it. You've done pretty well. Seven gives you 70 pounds. Well done. That's a nice start. So, at the end of the first round of our quiz, we have couple number two. That's Jeff and Sue. They have 40 pounds. Couple number one, Roger and Linda, have got 60. In the lead at the moment, no doubt. That's Steve and Leslie. Couple number three on 70 pounds. Good. Okay. Now then, Linda has the round two questions. And as I said, you do get a free choice this time. Which one do you want, Leslie? You want number two? Okay. So good luck for you. A 70 pounds, a deep breath, Steve. Yep. 70 pounds for each correct answer. The question here is about sportsmen and women who are known for excellence in one sport in particular. We will give you the name of a sports person. We want you to give the sport in which they excel. Now, Neil Adams is famous in the world of judo. We'll start you with that one. Neil Adams and... Judo. Jane Torville. Ice skating. Cliff Thorburn. Snooker. Pat Jennings. Football. Sharon Davis. Swimming. James Hunt. Motor racing. John Frankham. Pass. 
Hannah Mandlikova. Tennis. Ingrid Christensen. Pass. Tom Watson. Golf. Indeed, yes, you got it, and a great goal for that man is too. Ingrid Christensen, of course, won the London Marathon. L lovely lady from Norwegian, yes, she won that. Uh, what else did we know? John Frankham, of course, the wonderful jockey, who only retired a little time ago. But that's all you've lost there at the end of that. Well, 560 pounds you got. Well done. Off you go with Linda. See you in just a chat. Okay, let's have couple number two back for the quiz. There we are. Jeff and Sue, which envelope do you want? Number one or number three? Yes, number one says Sue. Okay, good luck to you. And you are going for 40 pounds for each correct answer. And again, the question is about sportsmen and women who are known for excellence in one sport in particular. We will give you the name of a sports person. We want you to give the sport in which they excel. Scott Hamilton is a world-class performer in ice skating. We'll start you with that one, Scott Hamilton and... Ice skating. Nicky Lauda. Motor racing. Arthur Ashe. Tennis. Graham Gooch. Cricket. Greville Starkey. Pass. Jonah Barrington. Squash. Tessa Sanderson. Javelin. Eric Bristow. Darts. Bernhardt Langer. Golf. And Bill Hoskins. Pass. Yes, that would have got me too. He's a top man in fencing, but you've done pretty well. The other one, the only other one you didn't have there was Greville Starkey, of course, was horse racing. So what do we got there? 320 pounds you've got. That's nice, Sue and Jeff. Off you go with Caroline. Will we see them in part two? We'll find out after we meet once again, couple number one. Now then, here's Roger and Linda back with us. Thank you, Linda. And you're going for 60 pounds for each correct answer. That's it, and hold her very tightly. I can see what's going on there. Question again is about sportsmen and women who are known for excellence in one sport in particular. We will give you the name of a sports person. We want you to give the sport in which they excel. Mike Hazelwood is famous in the world of water skiing. We'll start you with that one. Mike Hazelwood and? Water skiing. Ray Reardon. Snooker. Steve Cram. R running. Kenny Dalgleish. Football. Pam Shriver. Tennis. Dennis Lilly. Cricket. Mary Lou Retton. Pass. Nelson Piquet. Motorism. Phil Reed. Pass. And Anna Marie Moser Pro. Uh, skiing. Yes, indeed. You were very good to know that one, Roger. I didn't know that. I couldn't even say it, but I sounded like Clouseau then. Pro. <laughs> However, Phil Reed was motorcycling, Mary Lou Retton was gymnastics. Again, you've done pretty well. 480 pounds. Oh, lovely. What a nice, what a high scoring this week. So, at the end of our quiz this week, we have couple number two, that's Jeff and Sue on 320 pounds. We have couple number one, that's Roger and Linda, 480. No doubt about the winners. That's couple number three, Steve and Leslie. They've got 560 pounds. So, of course, we have to say goodbye, unfortunately, to couple number two, Jeff and Sue. Ah, oh, yeah. As I always say, Jeff and Sue, always a shame to say goodbye to somebody at this point in the show. I know it seemed quite a long time to you, I'm sure. Stick around and enjoy the rest of the show. How much again was it? 320 pounds. 320 pounds is a lot of money. Say, some people don't win with that most weeks here. There's the ceramic dusty bin, and you know they're worth quite a few pennies these days. Jeff, thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. Sue? Thank mm? you. Give them a round of applause, folks. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Three, two, one. Don't go far. Okay, it's part two of three, two, one with a theme of country and western and a bit of a local derby really here. We've got Roger and Linda from Hull playing against Steve and Leslie who are from right here in Leeds. Folks, you know what happens here? We're going to show you three items. At the end of each one of them, one of our guests is going to come to the table here, leave you a clue object and read a rhyme. When we have three on the table, you're going to have to choose one to reject if you get through the elimination question to wear those wonderful prizes and the dreaded dusty bin is waiting for you. So good luck. On with our theme of country and western. And here's a young lady who's right proud to say, thank God I'm a country girl. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of talent, Miss Adele King.
It's kind of laid back, there ain't much a little country girl like me can't hack It's early to rise and early in the sack Thank God I'm a country girl Well, the simple kind of life never did me no harm I raised me a family, you're working on the farm My days are all filled with an easy country charm Thank God I'm a country girl Well, I got me a fine man, I got my own fiddle The sun's coming up, I got cakes on the griddle Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle Thank God I'm a country girl When the work's all done and the sun's settled low Pull out my fiddle and I'm rising up the bow The kids are asleep, so I keep it kind of low Thank God I'm a country girl Well, I'd play Sally Gordon all day if I could But the Lord and my man wouldn't think it very good So I fiddle when I can, I work when I should Thank God I'm a country girl Well, I got me a fine man, I got my own fiddle The sun's coming up, I got cakes on the griddle That ain't nothing but a funny money riddle Thank God I'm a country girl Don't, don't, don't rush. Take your time. Just a minute, Dad. I'm not All surprised. Right. Thank All goodness right. you're alive. Never mind a country girl. <laughs> a lot of talent. And of oh. course, you, you, I mean, you don't specialise in country singing. You're not a country singer as such. No. You sing everything, don't you? Yes, more or less. You've been it's a big just... name in, in, in Ireland for a long, long time. Yes? yes. Oh, great. Yes. Good for you. So this is the clue, is it? This is the clue. Uh, well, it's not that Japanese well, fish I was talking about. What is it? It's uh, a curry. It's uh, Ruby Murray. It is, it's Ruby oh, Murray. Man, a curry, right, and what about the rhyme? All right, the rhyme says, An armoured guard for my protection, A pin of mine aids your selection. Beautifully said. Voila. Now, remember that one. Ladies and gentlemen, Adele King. Thank Good luck, Thank you very much, Ted. Take care. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye, <laughs> love. Oh. Now... I always say it's probably way too early to start thinking about anything. Linda, any idea? Yes. Yeah? Don't want to think about that yet. Steve, any Not idea? No clue. No? All right. You won't have a clue when we've got the lot on the table, I'll tell you that. <laughs> anyway, keep, you. your, keep your fingers crossed because we're now going to have item number two. And I'm delighted to introduce this next fella to you because I've tried for many years to get him on the show, you know. And at last, he's condescended to come on to the show. And the one thing he does want you to do, he's singing a real country and western song. You know the words. Please join in. Make him feel at home. Here he is. There, well, all right, you're over the gate. Here we go now. What are you going to give me for them? I'll give you 25, make it 30, make it 35, make it 40, make it 45, make it 50, make it 50, make it 50. Hey. There was a boy in Arkansas. He wouldn't listen to his ma when she told him that he should go to school. He'd sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, and then pretty soon you'd find him at the local auction barn. Oh, well, he'd stand and listen carefully. Then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He said, oh my, it's do or die. I've got to learn that auction cry. Gonna make my mark and be an auctioneer. Oh well, as time went on, he did his best and all could see he didn't jest. He practiced calling bids both night and day. His pup would find it behind the barn just to work in a fan open storm. He tried to imitate that auctioneer. 
Oh, well, the people came from miles around just to hear him make that happy sound that filled their hearts with such a happy charm. Whoa, now he stops and all the lands let pause and give that man a hand for he's the best of all the auctioneers. Yeah, 25 together now, one more time. Well, go and join in, be social. Have a go. Yeah, forty dollar bid, big forty-five, big forty-five, big forty-five, big forty-five. Who will be there at a forty-five dollar bid? Who will be there at a forty-five dollar bid? Oh, hey, who will be there at a forty-five dollar? Get that little bit of little bit of little bit of little bit of to see you on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'd love to be here. I've been wanting to come here for so long. Well, what are you doing? Not much. I'm doing three, two, one at the moment. Are you really? Here's the clue for you. It's more food, would you believe? It's a pan full of carrot peelings. And here's the rhyme. It says, gee, it's ancient, shining bright. If it is left, or is right. So, there's always a lot of sighs that go on here when these rhymes are read. <laughs> no idea at all there? Not, a Not on that one, Rog, no? Done now. Okay, well. one more on the table, then we've got to make up our minds what we're going to reject if we get through the question. Don't forget, of course, you can hear the other t these two again, just to refresh your memory. Keep listening to the next one that comes in. <laughs> right, we'll have item number three. Son of a Preacher Man is the number, sung beautifully by Miriam Stockley and danced delightfully, as always, by the Brian Rogers Connection. <laughs> Billy Ray was a preacher's son When his daddy would visit he'd come along When they gathered round and started talking That's when Billy would take me walking I threw the backyard window walking Then he'd look into my eyes Lord knows to my surprise And the only one who could ever was the son of a preacher man The only boy who could ever teach me Was the son of a preacher man Yes, he was, he was mm, Yes, he was Being good isn't always easy No matter how hard I try When he started sweet talking to me He'd come and tell me everything and tell me everything is all Can we get away again tonight? And the only one who could ever reach me Was the son of a preacher man The only boy who could ever teach me Was the son of a preacher man Yes, he was Was, mm, was. He was. Oh, Lord, he was Yes, he was Yeah. 
Busy as always, these fellas. They really are. What's going to be the clue here? Well, I brought a bowl of stewed prunes. Stewed prunes. Look at this, will you? We have got the YTV canteen here in one go. <laughs> stewed prunes. Prunes is the clue this time. And what about the rhyme? Right, the rhyme is, is this what we're hiding? The rest is all deciding. There you are. Very short and sweet, eh? Ladies and gentlemen, Chris, Thank of the Brian much. Rogers Connection. Thank Cheers, you. Chris. Bye-bye, mate. All the best. Oh, yeah. Well, well, you've just heard that one. I don't suppose it's given you much idea, but I can read the other two again. No idea about that one at all? Prunes, no. Prunes, yes. It's an obvious thought, but I'll leave <laughs> you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the audience know as well. However, I'll read the other two again. Remember, the number one item was brought in by Adele King. She brought in some curry and she said, an armoured guard for my protection, a pin of mine aids your selection. Okay. I brought you in the pan of carrot peelings. Pan full of carrot peelings. Gee, it's ancient, shining bright, if it is left or is right. Well, look, here we are. We have three on the table. You've got to choose one to reject if you get through the elimination question. So, Roger, it's up to you, Steve, Leslie, Yolanda, any idea? Um, you want to get rid of the curry, Leslie, yes? I think so. Oh, I well, I'm about to have taken the decision. Is that okay? I'll stand by that. All right. Oh, so that's okay, is it, Steve? Yes? Yeah. Okay. All right. You're going to get rid of some curry here. Okay. And how yeah. about Roger and Linda? Oh, they're, they're having a chat amongst themselves. I think we'll probably settle for the prunes. You <laughs> 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 well, I'm glad I don't have to settle for them. <laughs> you can take them you with you now or eat them no, here yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah. You want to reject would, the prunes, yeah. do you, Roger? Is yeah, that okay, yeah. Linda? Yes. Re you're rejecting the prunes and you're going to get rid of the curry. What okay, we we'll shoot the curry, right. Shoot the curry? Yeah. Okay, fine, we've established that. That's all right now, Leslie, is it? Okay, He's yeah. decided there, wham, he was in. Right. You want to get rid of the curry yeah. and you're going to get rid of the prunes. That we've established if you get through the question. Here's the question here. Folks, yes, you're there. Put your hands beside that button, okay? No. I'm going to start to read this question to you. When you think you know the answer, hit the button and answer. Please don't answer before you hit the button. Otherwise, I do have to offer it to the other couple, okay? If they're wrong, of course, I'll continue reading till you get it right. Good luck to you all. This is an American country singer. She is a well-known figure in country music circles. She first entered the UK music charts with a record called Jolene. You've gone, Steve. Who is it? Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton, right. Yeah! yeah! You done it. Ah! Oh. Oh. Hey, hey. oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, I would say you were quite happy about that, weren't you? <laughs> and the audience as well. How lovely. It's all about taking that chance. Back <laughs> Never mind. Let's hope it's going to be worth breaking your back for. Well done. Your lights are flashing. The buzz buzzers went off. You were correct. You took the chance. It was Dolly Parton, which means, of course, we have to say goodbye to Linda and Roger. Linda's here with the money. How much did they win in the quiz? £480. Pounds. 480 That's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Lovely. Linda has the ceramic dusty bin. And as always, you get this file in the show, there is a consolation prize, and Caroline Monroe has that for you over there. It's a kettle barbecue with a full range of serving dishes. How about that? That's pretty good. Marcy, well, Linda, take care. You too, Rods. Thanks for being such a lovely couple. Give them a ripple for going off, folks. Super people. Love the hole. Bye-bye. Well, OK. That means, of course, uh, we're going to reject... Well, yes, now the trouble really starts for you, doesn't it? You've rejected the curry. We're going to come back after the break and see just what that is. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Three, two, one, with a plate of curry. Don't forget. Okay, yes, it's part three of three, two, one with our theme, country and western, and we've got Steve and Leslie from right here in Leeds, a run through to this part of the show, and can you see how they're holding each other tightly there? They don't even care about hiding it anymore. Anyway, you've got through to this part, congratulations on that, and you've rejected the curry, right? Yeah. Item num number one, which was brought in by Adele King, she brought you in some curry. An armoured guard for my protection, a pin of mine, aids your selection. Still no idea, only what you hope it might be. Let's hope you're right. 
Adele brought you in the curry and she said, my, an armoured armored guard for my protection. Don't forget Adele's name is King. So we may be looking for another name for a King's armoured guard. A pin of mine, age your selection. A pin of Adele's would be a king pin. And the curry which Adele brought you in was a plate of curry, curry. and rice. rice. Curry and rice. C-A-R, a King's Armoured Guard. It's the Escort. Oh. Ah. Yeah. The Star Prize would be the first one, wouldn't it? It has to go, so it's got to go away. We're going to get on. We're going to have item number four of our country and western show. Now we have a singer from across the border. And I don't mean the Mexican border, the Scottish border. Up there, he's known as Mr. Country Music. Ladies and gentlemen, Sidney Devine is here. What are you going to leave these folks right, with? Right, we have a, for a clue, a bin liner. A bin liner? A bin liner, yes. Okay, that's the and clue. The clue reads... Now listen to this. Down under, Sydney time you'll beat. If needing this, the trip's complete. Mm. Mm. Very short, very sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, Sydney Devine. Thank, Thank you, Sydney. You. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. <laughs> now, 
Which one do you want to hear just to refresh your memory? <laughs> Even no. that's a big that decision. One. Yeah, you want to hear the proofs, yeah. okay? They were brought in. Item number three from Chris Baldock of the Brian Rogers Connection. He said, is this what we're hiding? The rest is all deciding. Here. I know it's not that easy when you're standing here and so much more simpler at home. One's got to be rejected. Which one will it be? Oh, hey, oh, Leslie went like that. She didn't want to say prunes, but you're going to get rid of them? I don't like prunes. No, and well, neither do you. <laughs> Nobody likes prunes. Remind me of school but dinners. But somebody's got to have them. Yeah, school okay. dinners. Ugh. Yeah? yeah? Is that okay, Steve? Yeah. yeah. Leslie's yeah. all right? And you're thrilled about this, aren't you? Okay. Yeah. The she prunes. wants to eat them this way. Yeah. Well, she might have to after this. Are you sure it's going to go, is it? Uh, and, well, yeah. is it? Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. Brought in by Chris of the Brown Rogers Connection. Is this what we're hiding? The rest is all deciding. Is this what we're hiding? That sounds a bit dangerous. But don't forget the word hide has other meanings. The rest we told you was all deciding. If the hide was leather, you'd get plenty of rest. On this prize, just like the stewed prunes, it's a three-piece sweet, but just take a look at this. A luxuriously comfortable three-seater settee with two armchairs in beautiful soft leather together with the matching coffee table. Oh, yeah. Not exactly dusty, Ben, and I think, uh, never mind you, I think you ought to eat these stew prunes now, don't you? <laughs> what a shame. Oh, dear. As I say, the next one on the table, then you know dusty, Ben, is going to be one of those last three, so we've really got to start thinking about that. Keep your fingers crossed. On we'll go, and uh, item number five of our country and western show. And I'm pleased to say, here's a gentleman that's flown all the way in from Nashville, Tennessee, Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Ritchie from the United States. Corn was dry, the weeds were high, when Daddy took to drinking. Him and Lucy Walker. They took up and run away Mama cried a tear Then she promised 14 children I swear you'll never see A hungry day Well, when Mama sacrificed her pride The neighbors started talking But I was much too young To understand the things they said Things that mattered most of all was Mama's chicken and dumplings and a good night kiss before we went to bed. Oh, the path was steep and wide from footsteps deep to our cabin. Above the door there burned a scarlet lamp. And late at night a hand would knock and there would stand a stranger. Yeah, I'm the son of Hickory Holler's train. Well, when Daddy left, destitution came upon our family. Not one neighbor volunteered to lend a helping hand. So just let them gossip all they want. Oh, she loved us and she raised us. Proof is standing here, a full-grown man. Well, last summer, Mama passed away and left the ones who loved her. Oh, but each and every one is more than grateful for their birth. And each Sunday, she receives a fresh bouquet of 14 roses. And a card that says, the greatest mom on earth. Oh, the path was deep and wide, from footsteps leading to our cabin. Above the door, there burned a scarlet lamp. And late at night, a hand would knock and there would stand a stranger. Yeah, I'm the son of Hickory Hollow's train. Oh, the path was steep and wide From footsteps leading to our cabin 
door that burned a scarlet lamp. And late at night, a hand would knock and there would stand a stranger. Yeah, I'm the son of Victor Hunter's friend. Yeah, I'm the son of Victor Holler's train. Howdy, Paul. Yeah, great. And uh, may I say, you set the tall on the ground. How tall are you? Yeah. What are you, six uh, four? No, I'm about five feet sixteen. Five foot sixteen, he says. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, it's good to have you with us. And what are you going to leave him as a clue here tonight? Well, back home we call this a rabbit's foot, but a it says foot. a rabbit's paw. A rabbit's paw yeah. is the clue. Ah, there it is. And what about the rhyme? Can we have that? Split the fare for a dollar, but the hickory might be the horror. Yeah, and we beautifully said as well. He sounded as though he was singing that, didn't he? Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Ritchie. Thank you, Paul. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. Did you remember? He's really chastising her here. Did you get the last line? Did, did you get the first line? Yeah. Do you want to hear one of these two again? Which one do you want to hear? Well, we know what that rhyme is, don't we? What? That one. You know what that rhyme is? don't know what the... the yeah. Split the fare for a dollar. We know the first one of that one. Right. So, you want to hear that one again or that one? Oh, dear. Even that's a big decision. Uh, that one. <laughs> That one, eh? I listen to that one. You want to hear that one? Okay, I brought this in, right? Okay, this was brought in by me, number two item. I did the auctioneer, and the rhyme said this. A pan full of carrot peelings. The rhyme said, gee, it's ancient, shining bright. If it is left, or is right. There you are. Okay? Now, you heard it again. Now you've heard it again. You must reject one of these three, being the last three on the table. So, it's entirely up to you. And seeing how easy it was... Gee, it's ancient, shining bright... Hickory Who's Holler it? in the Far well, East. That's that one. The pan. I haven't got a clue. And the. Uh, if, we, if we say that's gold, it, then it's shine bright. Twenty-five dollar bid and out of thirty dollar thirty. Will you give me thirty? Make it. It's a big shining bright. Do you have to make a decision? It's heads or tails. That. You're going to get rid of that. Is that all right, Les? Yes. I'm, I shouldn't ask you that. Is it going? Oh dear! Oh yes, dear! Yes. Yes. Go on, says Leslie. All right, Steve. Yeah. You don't want to change your mind. The pa rabbit's paw brought in just now. Number five item from Paul Ritchie, who said, split the fare for a dollar, but the hickory might be the horror. Mm. Okay. Now then, this is going to be rejected. And split the fare for a dollar. The fare could be a holiday, perhaps to somewhere that has dollars as currency. Now, if you split fare, F-A-R-E, you get far and E or east. Bearing in mind that it was Paul Ritchie, a singer, who brought you the poor as a clue. And that in the Far East, you might hear Hickory Holler from the song pronounced Hickory Horror. It is a wonderful holiday. Just take a look at this. A scheduled flight to Singapore and the start of a wonderful holiday. A tour of Singapore will first introduce you to this fascinating city. And then you'll have three days to explore both the old and the new. Next stop, Penang, rightly called the Pearl of the Orient, for a week of breathtaking sights and unforgettable experiences. The more traditional holiday pastimes are not forgotten either, but whether you want to be energetic or just relax and enjoy the surroundings, this is certainly a holiday of a lifetime. Certainly looked it to me. And Leslie and Paul, holiday of a lifetime. Now listen, Steve, we're, we're down to the final two, and being the final two, I can read them both again. Now, right, I brought okay. you in number two item, right? Yeah. I brought you in a pan full of carrot peelings, and I said, gee, it's ancient, shining bright, if it is left, or is right. Yeah. Okay, you got that. Yeah. You remember that. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this was the bin liner brought in by Sidney Devine. Item number four. Down under, Sydney time you'll beat, if needing this, the trip's complete. So, now you've heard them both again, and if we've had trouble before, we know Dusty Bin is one of those. It's entirely up to you which one you reject. It's an eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's been like that all, all night tonight. The trip's complete. If needing this, the trip's complete. Now then, have you, you notice you, got, you get no offers from anybody this time? They're, they're all keeping well out the way now. Oh. Hang on. Is that the obvious? No, that's not the obvious. 
What are you going to do, Steve? Leslie? It's a yeah, difficult I can't decision. Hear that one again. Sorry? Can't don't hear need to hear that one again. That's all right. I know you don't I mean. need to hear it again. I know, no? I know what the words are, but I mean. Yeah, you can't work it out. It's really. What's a... the last time this one again? She's looking at me. I don't know. Can we hear it again? No, no it's not allowed. No, it's not allowed, I'm afraid. You, you hear them once and that's it. And then the last two, you hear them both again. So it's really a question of what you decide to reject. I hate getting to this point in the show. We know he's one of those two, and I wouldn't like this decision at all. Dear, oh dear, oh and some dear. great prizes, as always, have gone tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you going to do, Leslie? Meeny, meeny, miny, moe. Yeah. Get rid of that. Is that all right, Steve? Oh. He's very, he's very strong. He goes in like a good one all the time. Is that okay? Well, Les. Oh, I thought he was going to belt her then. Well, Les. <laughs> hey? Yeah, right. Yeah, all right, yeah. Les. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. All right then, you're rejecting. Item, no, no's and yeses. This is, I'm afraid they have rejected it now. Item number four, Sidney the Vine brought you in a bin liner. That seems to be a bit too obvious. Somebody said they're back here. Down under, Sydney time, you'll beat a holiday to Australia? Or is this one to put you down? If needing this, the trip's complete. So if this is the one you need, perhaps we completely trip you up because if you add the bin liner to the initials of down under Sydney time, you'll beat. If needing, it's Dusty Bin, you've done it! He's right, Leslie. He's I've been rejected. Been so, I've never been so pleased to see a bin in my life. <laughs> well, I've got news. Neither is Steve, and neither, neither has this entire audience here tonight, and I'm sure the folks at home. You really had us like that. I hate to get to that point of the show, but Dusty, my friend, nobody wants your illegal booze tonight. Away you go. Take him away. <laughs> Lovely. Well, now. Well, folks, at least you know you have a great prize tonight. And as I said earlier, you've got rid of some wonderful prizes tonight, including the first... That will be just as good. This will be just... Well, I think after him, anything will be just as good. Yeah, OK, I hope you didn't good. choose this because I brought it in. But you have stuck with this all the way through. Number two item, I brought you in the pan full of carrot peelings and said, gee, it's ancient, shining bright, if it is left or is right. So we know it's right, whatever it is, OK? Right. OK, I brought you the pan full of carrot peelings. Gee, it's ancient, shining bright. Another word for ancient is old. If it is left or is right, if it is left on the table or is right, because or is another word used for gold. what gold. you said earlier on gold, which is also G and old together. You could pan for it all right. You're absolutely right, Steve. Take a look at the carrots we got for you here. Two beautiful gold watches with lizard skin straps. Sapphires and diamonds provide the settings for the lady, and an onyx dress ring is among the man's gold collection. <laughs> Look at that! He's got his old watch off and ready. OK, Steve and Leslie, let's go and get them. There you go. Now then. Look at that. There you are. Yes, he's got rid of the old watch, not just the watch, it's I'm all gone. of this, it's I'm all gone. coming off here and now, look at this, <laughs> he can't wait to have a look at it, it's a sensational Please. prize, but Steve, Please. I always say this, they forget it at this part of the show, Caroline, as money you won in the quiz, Jeez. how much Caroline? 560. 560, what a night, what a superb night, hey, Steve, good luck, thank you, yeah, thank you. congratulations, Leslie, mm -hmm. wonderful, what a night, what a close save, don't do that to us anymore, will you? It seems to happen nearly every week. Who we see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye now. Oh. Um.